What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the GT75 with the i7 9750H. This is the brand new six core processor from Intel. I was a little disappointing, honestly. I thought there were gonna be eight cores based on the leaks, but they're not. This is a six core processor. At the current time, this is not announced. I got this early. I don't have any of the official info on it other than the stuff that I was able to find through CPU ID, Intel XDU, and the benchmarks that I've done. Now, this is basically the ideal situation for running this new processor. This is gonna show us the maximum possible performance because this chassis is a thick, big, heavy chassis that will perfectly be able to cool the processor. Now, I'd also like to mention that HID of did send this laptop over to me. It does have some cooling upgrades, but the overall performance should not be changed. I mean, this thing's already gonna run everything as cool as possible. The one thing I will note though, is that if you do get a thin and light laptop, it might be slightly less performance, depending on whether that thin and light laptop can actually cool the CPU fully. So definitely something to keep in mind when you're buying a laptop. Taking a look at Intel XTU, let's take a look at the core ratios first. You can see that when there is one active core, we can get the core turbo speed up to 4.5 gigahertz, which is pretty good and it's quite a bit better than the previous 8750H, which I believe turbo boosted up to four or 4.1 or maybe 4.2, depending on how the manufacturer tuned the chip. Well, with this one now, you're gonna get an all-core turbo of four gigahertz instead of 3.9. So realistically, the single-core turbo speed is more of a boost compared to the all-core turbo speed, which only went up 0.1 gigahertz, which is a little bit disappointing. I wish it went higher than that, but that's what we got here. So knowing this, I pretty much always am activating more than one core at a time. So we're really looking at a 0.1 gigahertz speed increase, which is not much. Uh, but there might be some other things going on in the background. We're gonna take a look at some benchmarks. Now, when we opened up Intel X2 for the first time on a fresh install of Windows, we did have a minus 0.05 undervolt. So this thing came undervolted from the factory or HID Evolution did it, I'm not sure which. Sometimes the manufacturers do a stock undervolt depending on the manufacturer. Now the interesting thing about that undervolt is that we really couldn't increase the undervolt much. We tried going up to minus 100. We had instability reduced to 0.80. We still had instability. So the sweet spot for this processor is somewhere between 0.05 and 0.08. We didn't fiddle around with it to find the exact undervolting sweet spot because it's not really needed on this machine because you're gonna get the maximum possible performance. Uh, you're gonna have no power limit throttling or thermal throttling just because of the nature of this chassis. The main thing to note about that is that the 8750H was almost always undervoltable to 0.1 millivolts, where this one was not stable at that speed. So I don't know if that is just a single one-off thing or if this is gonna be a new theme for these new 9750H chips. Maybe they're just not gonna be as undervolt friendly. I don't know. My thought is that it could be because we're looking at a very similar chip, but running at just a slightly higher clock speed. So therefore, you cannot undervolt as much. I don't know. That's my current running theory. Now for this comparison, we're gonna be comparing this processor versus some of the other processors that are out there. We got the high-end 9900K, we've got the metal tier 8950HK from last year, and then we also have the baseline uh, 8750H in the Evoc P960EN. Okay, so taking a look at these benchmarks again, we got Cinebench R15 here, we got the 1293, or approximately 1300. The best score we had was 1297 from the GT75, and that's pretty good. That's about a 100 point improvement from the average that the 8750H would get. Taking a look at the Adobe 4K render test time, we have the GT75 coming in at eight minutes and 10 seconds. Now this is actually slower than the other three laptops that we have here, and I wouldn't really worry about this too much. Adobe can be really weird depending on which laptop you render it on, and I believe the reason for this is the Intel HD hardware acceleration. So sometimes the Intel GPU can be utilized to speed up the processing of the video. And I believe this is on systems with NVIDIA Optimus enabled. I need to do more investigation into this because this is a big deal for people that do video editing. Taking a look at 3D Mark Firestrike physics test. So you can see that we're scoring about 700 points more than the 8750H in this synthetic test. Taking a look at the Time Spy CPU score, we have a increase of about 800 over last year's CPU. This is actually a bigger increase than you would actually expect. Uh, and it actually almost beats the ASUS ROG G703GX, which has an i9-8950HK that's overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. So that's really good, I think. This is uh, one of the better scores, definitely in the benchmarks, showcasing the potential improvement of this processor. Now we did test a number of games with this new laptop setup, and I'll be doing a full review on this GT75 soon, but I'm just focused on the processor because that is the new announced 
item for today. So we've got Fortnite coming in at 291 FPS. That is insane. That is really, really good. Apex Legends on all low scored 230 FPS. Now for Fortnite and Apex Legends, we did have the settings set pretty low. And the main reason for that is that we wanted to see the CPU performance. Uh, and when you have the settings set to low, it really showcases how much the CPU can help increase the frame rate. And I gotta say that the 9750H really helped improve the overall FPS in these two games. Taking a look at an Apex Legends uh, comparison here, you can see that the GT75 is doing exceptionally well, averaging 230 FPS compared to the Area 51M's 256 FPS in the exact same test. And I think that really goes to show how well the CPU is performing. It's right up there with a desktop CPU, at least in these CPU bound games. And I think it's really, really surprising to me because I wasn't expecting this good of performance. This is significantly better performance than the previous 8750H. You can see that we have a 30 FPS bump compared to the Evoc P960EN. Taking a look at Fortnite, you can see that we have a very, very good performance coming out of the i7 9750H. We've got 291 frames per second compared to the 315 for the 9900K. Now, I did score higher when I overclocked the 9900K, but this is an exceptionally good result for a middle tier laptop processor. Now for Far Cry 5, we scored 108 FPS, and you can see on this comparison graph how well this processor is performing compared to these really high end chips. Far Cry 5 can be very CPU limited, and it's very interesting to see that we scored as high as 108 FPS, and this is with an RTX 2070 and this new i7 8950H, and we're competing with the Area 51M with the 9900K and RTX 2080, so only scoring eight FPS lower than them, that's less than a 10% gap difference. In my opinion, that is extremely impressive and probably the best performance indicator here of this new hardware. So big, giant thumbs up from me. Also notice that this particular setup really outperforms the Evoc P960N with that Max-Q graphics card, uh, and that's because Far Cry 5 will really push the power limiting on that Max-Q graphics card. Now I did stress test this machine with the Heaven benchmark as well as running Fire Strike physics test at the same time in a constant loop to see what the average uh, clock speed would be on the GPU and the CPU, and the good news here is that we're getting a constant 3.99 gigahertz across all cores with like basically no drops during this stress test. I'm gonna quickly breeze through some benchmarks here. We've got 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. We also have the Time Spy graphics score. And the main reason why I'm just breezing through these is because you don't really need to see these for the CPU performance. This is just kind of if you want to take a quick look at them. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with the 9750H as a processor as a whole. I honestly, when I saw that it was only a six core processor still, and that it only went up 0.1 on the all-core clock speed, I was really disappointed. But taking the performance into actual games really showed that they did do some improvements in the actual processor. And it, it, it may not be much, it may be only 10%, it may be 20%. There's gotta be some additional improvements in here. Again, I'm not sure about the technical details of this new processor because it's, it's currently unannounced and there's no official word on anything about this processor. So uh, the only thing I've been able to deduct about this processor is the things I've been able to find out through testing and by opening up like Intel XDU and stuff. So the big question is, would I recommend picking up a ninth gen processor over an eighth gen processor if there is a price difference? And I gotta say, the answer is yes, if you play CPU bound games, because this one definitely performed better in CPU bound games and that, that matters a lot to me. If you don't play CPU bound games, save some money and get the eighth gen. So that's it for this initial testing of the 9750H processor. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Brandon, out. Ooh, so pretty. Why is it so big, though? It's so big. <laughs>